Facebook, Facebook, good morning, good morning. It is my birthday, and I am glad to be with you. I didn't bring my, my uh, man, my hydration out here, my body restoration to keep my hands nice and fresh. But nonetheless, I'm glad to be on with you guys today. It's Thriving Thursday, and as you know, it's become a thing now. On Thursdays, we focus on how to thrive. What will it take so that you can no longer exist? but actually begin to thrive in your life. And today I have the privilege of bringing on someone who I respect and admire, who is real as real can be, highly educated, totally committed, and in the trenches, empowering people and transforming lives. Dr. Marcus Robinson, let me bring in Doc here real quick. Good morning, sir. Hey, 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 good morning. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. So I got to tell the story really quick. So I was in Benton Harbor, Michigan. I I lived in Chicago, but I went back to Benton Harbor for some leadership coaching training that I was in. I wanted to continue to develop my craft probably 15 years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago. And Dr. Robinson is there. I didn't know who he was. Uh, Graduate University of Miami. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And so he's in there teaching and, you know, he put something up on the board. And for those of you who remember the marketplace, a lot of you may or may not remember, but he put something up on the board that really struck me in a way that I never considered before. He took and he wrote on the board, he just wrote Jesus right in the middle. And it wasn't a religious topic at all, but he just put Jesus in the middle. Up top, he put Christian. Over here, he put uh, Buddhist. Down here, he put uh, Jew. Over here, he put Muslim. And then he said, who is Jesus to Christians? And they said, Savior, Lord. Who is he to the Jews? Prophet. Who is he to Buddhist, an enlightened one? And he just went around and what he what he opened the mind to in that moment was that it just depends on your perspective. And so when we look at life and how things occur to us, we may have our perspective fixed and think we're right. Not fully understanding that if we were in someone else's shoes, it would look completely different. And that really helped me. It helped me. And I I use that example so often with people Mm -hmm. when dealing with controversial topics. Because if we fully understood, we may think completely different ourselves. <laughs> so anyway, good morning, man. I, I, I yeah. really appreciate that moment in life. You I've never you now, baby. Snap, snap. <laughs> you preach it. Praise the Lord. All right. Wait. That's and great. then and then you came around with Pinnacle, the company I travel with and, and uh, offer presentations around the world. And you're just coaching. And and how about you introduce yourself? I've tried, but I'm uh, sure I didn't uh, do it just. No, no, so so you, you did good. Um, so so the the quick introduction on me is I'm the fifth generation son of a slave named Rosa Hall. Rosa wow. grew up on the Gullah Island plant, you know, plantation down there off of uh, South Carolina, and uh, she was a she, she was a, a a midwife, um, okay. a, among many things, right? She was a hardworking midwife and met up with an itinerant, you know. Baptist preacher and ran off, you know, like we're gonna wow. get some freedom out of this game, right? Uh-huh. And they they made their way down to South Florida where most of my family um is located. My tribe is all up and down Florida and the the, the root of it is is at the bottom, the 305, baby, down there in my <laughs> they're down there at Homestead in Florida City, the last hard ground before you hit the keys, you know. That's yes. they, they retreated that part trying to make life and uh and work and they were they were sharecroppers uh, along the way and um man they were successful at it they had you know they 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 they, they uh, took care of many many families that would come along the season you know to pick and plant and all that kind of stuff and so they're a whole part of that whole migrant scene and uh my mother's father my mother's parents had 17 kids my dad's parents down the road of uh-huh. had 12 and between them, they had three or four businesses that you know that would wow. keep everybody employed. And yeah, uh, yeah. my grandfather's, uh, uh, I had, one was named Fred and the other one's named James. Now James was the hard working, you know, I'm a hustling, we gonna get this done kind of thing. And he would say, <clears throat> I love education. I'm so proud of all of my kids. I mm-hmm. educate all of my kids. I let every one of them go to elementary school before I put them to work. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, that's what it was like. Yeah, it was, I said, every last one of them go to elementary school before they go to work. And uh, right on to the grandkids, too. And that includes me, right? 
And then okay. so my my, um, Ralph, my father's father, his name was Fred, his nickname was Knowledge because he was like the cat in the region who could read, who who read um, everything. And he was like, if you needed an answer to anything, you come to Knowledge. And between, <laughs> yeah, man, he was something else. So he, he gave my family our first, um, uh, set up encyclopedias, and and okay. he, he held his finger out like this and says, "I want you to read every one of them." Right? Wow. I swear, from about third grade to about eighth grade, I plowed through through the Encyclopedia Britannica because oh boy, would ask me about that every Sunday when I showed up at the house. What you read this week? Well, wait, wait. I, I gotta explain because some of my audience doesn't know what the Encyclopedia Britannica is. They just call it Google. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's 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 googling about thirteen to twenty books, you know. Yes. A A to C, you know, you know all that thing, right, 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 right. This is all the answers you need. You just got to know how to read, right? And you got to know yeah. how to you got to go get it. And what's crazy? So I got this these uh, Britannicas uh, probably in the mid sixties, and they were from the early fifties. You know, they were like, oh, yeah. but he would say, he would say, you how much of this you already know. If it's from the fifties, if you don't know it already, it's new to you. That's <laughs> correct. Know? And he says, and, and trust me, it don't change much every year because I don't try to buy them every year. <laughs> 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 he just gave up on buying them every year. I but uh, uh, was coming by trying to sell them to us, and I was like, "Can we get those? Can we get those?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he must have been selling them. That's how he had them, right? Could have yes. been one of them cats, right? Yes. Um, so so that's that's like my root and then um and then my foundation is in um so my grandmother my mother's mother um was the uh was 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 a was a, was a soulful woman who i would say could read a human being better than knowledge could read a book she knew people very 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 well and was uh, uh I, when i as i grew up i started to think of her as the as the mother of humanistic psychology, because she had all That's of that right. wisdom in her, mm -hmm. none of the book learning, but all of the wisdom, right? Yeah, that's spirit. Um, yeah, right. And so, so, uh, and so, this migrant woman um, turned into what was the director of what they call the Community Action Migrant Program for South Florida. Wow. Right. So she this she had she had no no high school diploma nor degree, but could read, write, and was learning because you know she hanging out with Fred Robinson, you know. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's family, right? right. Everybody, everybody, like I say, you didn't get to go book learning school, you had to learn from knowledge. That's kind of like the way it, way it was, right? Okay. We were smart as heck. And so she became the community action migrant program leader. Uh, which is now community action that the community action of across the United States of uh, anti poverty program. So it's it's huge. Wow, I, I'm yeah. familiar with that. I didn't realize they were related. That's yeah, that's, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. It, it started with you know, with migrants in the south because you know cats didn't know you know no you know all you know is how to work and can't yeah. read and whatnot. And so what the last thing I want to tell you about her was that one of her favorite hobbies was hobbies. Part of her job probably. But she would fill out the paperwork for every migrant child and all of her own who would complete high school to get into a historically black college. She filled all the paperwork for them. And this is she, this is this is what you catch her doing when she has not cooking, cleaning, or working, mm -hmm. or taking care of grandchildren. She's filling out applications for somebody, right? Wow. And and so she must have passed uh, probably uh, in the eighties, right? Okay. Eighties, maybe nineties. Early '90s, but I go to her house today and sit on her porch on any given Sunday, and somebody's gonna roll through with a SUV full of kids, or mm -hmm. uh, or or three or four different car loads, looking for Miss Mays. Does Miss Mays still live here? I just wanted to come to show her my family, my kids, my grandkids, and my great grandkids, because she the one lifted me up. Happens wow. almost every week, definitely every month. Somebody, wow. that, right? So, True legend. so, right, 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 like that. So, I am my my grandmother's pick, as it were. She used to tell my mother on my birthday almost all the time. She said, "You might have birthed him, but that's my son." That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Oh, 
that woman poured love and wisdom into me. All of them did. You know, everybody. Had a, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I had a tribe. Like you said, you know, we were talking earlier. I had a tribe. I had a tribe, baby. I yeah. had a tribe. That was it, like, it takes a tribe. This, this one right here, you know. And that, 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 I used to think it was really about me, but they said that about 17, 30 of us, right? Yeah. You know, this right here, this is the special one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lay hands on the brother. Uh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. But they, uh, they, they were like that by their... Uh, about all of their grandkids, and every every one of those seventeen on one side and twelve on another had at least five kids. So that's that's how many grandkids and cousins I grew up around. Wow! My wow. first friends, I didn't know nobody. I didn't even think nobody was in the world except some people who belonged to me. I, <laughs> it took, it took, I get it. I had to go to school to figure out that there was other people in the world. <laughs> you not my cousin? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Hey, and last, last funny story about this. So I, I met a woman here in Chicago. And she's a very, very good friend of mine. She's probably my best friend in Chicago. And um, when I met her, you know, she, looked, she got that look, right? I mean, you know, so sometimes you get, is that a family look or is that a look, look? <laughs> I know you do. I want it. I, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's so, 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 so we got to know each other a little bit, and I, and, I, and, she, and so she got sweet on me. I says, you know, you can't, we can't do this. She go, why that? So I showed her a picture of my cousin. She goes, wow, that looked like me from about twenty years ago. I said, yeah, you look just like my people. <laughs> so right? no, thank you. <laughs> and then, and then come to find out, so I learned about her family tree story, right? Okay. And. So I was born in Richmond Heights, a little black enclave, you know, just hidden in the woods, you know, keep black people away from polite society back in. Yeah, uh, that's what it was. Right. And um, and there was the next little enclave was about a mile or two away called Perrine. Okay. Right. Her mom and dad conceived her in Perrine and she was born there. And then when she was born, like just a mile away from my house where I was born, her family moved to Chicago, and I didn't meet her until five years ago. Wow. <laughs> wow, the world is small. What? It's so small. Um, man, all you got to do is look up in the sky every night and see just how small this is, you know. Yeah. It's, 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 this is such a small, beautiful, beautiful little enclave in the universe. Best weather this side of the galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful planet, baby. Just not screwing up. I, you know, the thing I love most about this pandemic thing was, uh, if one could love it, um, was uh, the photographs you, I saw about a week or two ago after we'd all been shut in for, the world had been shut yes. in for a month. Yes. And freaking Shanghai got fresh air now. Yes. What? I saw that. What? I saw that. That's a the lot to be grateful for. It's clear as a bell. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot to be grateful for. That's so good. That's so good. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful country. Crazy humans are crazy. That's, that's the only problem with this planet is humans don't know how to treat each other. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm writing a book on that. Yeah, tell me, yeah. tell me a little bit about it. The book is called Dogs Do It. And dogs the idea is that dogs smell each other's piss, smell each other's behinds, and they connect. Right. They take the time to interact. And if we would allow ourselves to be vulnerable and actually be involved in the mess of each other's lives, we'd right. actually create and develop something way more beautiful. But we spend yeah. too much time trying to make it look good, you know, right, trying right. to look, fuck right. up our check yeah. and all of that. Yeah, and it prevents that. us from really truly being community. But the opportunity that exists if we were to do so. Right. Right. Wow. Wow. Dog, dog go straight to the chase. Let me get a sniff of just how bad this really is so I'll just know what I'm getting into when I fall in love. I know what I'm getting into. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It is what it is. Let's, now let's go and connect. What's happening? Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Hey, yes. Smell you later. <laughs> yes. Yeah, smell you later. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. So, you know, one of the things she wanted to talk about when you asked me to come on was to talk about what am I doing um, mm-hmm. to keep myself, you know, uh, mentally well, you know, emotionally, spiritually, you know, really cleansed and and uh, available to myself. And um, yes. I, I made a little list of things I recommended to all my friends and family they should do before we went into, in, into the lockdown. So I, I could see it coming in January, yeah. February, I could see it coming. And yeah. so, so, so about the time they were starting to really get serious about it, I think LA went first, I mean, California went first, yeah. Washington or whatever. So I called my family and friends. I gave them a little list. I says, look, first of all, you had to figure out 
who you want to be locked up with for the next 90 days. And I'm not talking about somebody you like. Right. Also, somebody that you are willing to 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 take care of in the worst of all situations, you know, yeah. near their deathbed to make sure that they get every little thing and to expose yourself to all that. Or or the flip side, have somebody have to clean your butt and take you care of you. You make sure that you're with people like that. Because if you're not with people like that, chances are you're in the wrong bunch given the pandemic and what it could potentially mean. We didn't know what it really meant. Could have been zombies, as far as I know. Um, <clears throat> but that's the first idea, was to be with people you love. Mm -hmm. And so um, I guess got lucky enough to, uh, I've been talking with my son who had, moved, who had been away for five years in, in Brooklyn pursuing his music career. And, you know, and I got this thing going on with theater and, you know, film and, and music here in town. And uh, so I said, man, you gotta come on back, man. I got juice now. We got to help you move this thing along. He goes, man, no, thanks, Dad. You know, I got, I, I got this. I'm on my own adventure. You know, I'm making no, I team, you, know? No, I you know, I ain't walking in your shadows. Cold in that breeze, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so January he comes back to, to open a show for me that we did at Kennedy King College. I had him, you know, be a, a part of the, the 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 Martin Luther King speech slam. Yes. You know, do a tune, you know, do a thing, you know, he's in Brooklyn, you know, you got that out of town cred, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. So then, you know, about then I put the pressure on there. I go, now you in town, now you see what we got over here. You know, you know, you you want to go back to blah, 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 blah. So push come to shove, you know, he'd been dreaming about the opportunity, but really not with it. Okay. So took about moving coming back here. But took about okay. yeah, it took him a little while to figure that out. It was the hardest decision he'd ever made, I think. So he told us he eventually showed to come back, right? And then so he became he became my lockdown partner because otherwise I'd be here in my apartment by myself. That's otherwise, cool. I would have probably went to Miami or someplace else to, to yeah. hang out with him, right? Yeah. And um, so that's a beautiful thing. And we having the time yes. of our lives. So that's the first thing. Have somebody you love, and that you want to be around, and that you unconditionally gift the fullness of your love and support no matter come what may yeah you know, yeah. yeah you talk about being joyful if you walk around people like that every day you don't care much about the way they butt smell <laughs> because you know that's that's him that's them i yeah. know that smell, and i know what that smell will do for me in, in a pinch right yep. I, exactly. I, know that I, I know my back is covered my heart is supported and my vision is clear because they are in my space. Smell, yeah. hum, whatever, you know. Yeah. But it's a kind of beautiful thing. So we're having that great thing. Um, so that love, so that get love into your heart. So that's the first thing. You yeah. can't, you don't really need much else than that. But, you know, if you want a few other things, you know, right now I have I have an indoor gardening thing going on. I got me about okay. eight, nine, I got eight, nine plants I keep alive. Every now and then, you know, one of them go to the blink and Jason comes in here by. Three months ago, when he first came back, he goes, "What's that over in the corner? You know, sucking air, trying to, you know, yeah, yeah, survive, trying to fight for his life over there in the corner." I say, hey, every now and then you lose one, bro. It's part of life, you know. You can't. You, yeah. I, I, I treat them all with the due care and love. I think they're supposed to have pretty much even. Uh -huh. Each one's a little different. Some of them, you know, they'd be like, "Big Daddy," you know. I don't know what you're doing up over here, but you know I can I can reincarnate and be out of here tomorrow. So I'm, I'm not yeah. putting, I'm not yeah. putting yeah. up with yeah. you. Yeah. I'm headed to the next level, and I ain't mad about that. <laughs> but uh, that it, guy, it happens. Yeah, yeah, I love it, and that, and and they just they they keep me um they 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 keep me uh in a kind of a focused meditative awareness because they don't speak they don't tell you what their needs are they're like little children like babies they got no language to talk to me and say hey i need water hey i need plant food blah blah, blah. i have to look at their behavior sometimes you know when they stand up straight okay good yeah. Yeah. oh you hungry want to go over like this oh, oh, oh. Uh, don't get a little brown around the edges oh you ain't been eating right i ain't been feeding yeah. you yeah. Yeah. i gotta talk to them and everything whatnot and so uh, yeah, so that's it. So this this that's the in, indoor thing that keeps me going in the winter. And this yes, of course yeah. in the winter, and they say stay in your house. So there you go. I got something to do to cultivate life, living. Yeah. They give yeah. it to me. You know, they yeah. give me oxygen. They give me joy. They give yeah. me the opportunity yeah. to care. Yes, the opportunity to care for another might be why humans are alive in the first place. You know, yeah, one it's of funny. Them, 
I, I was talking to a friend about you know the whole Thriving Thursday concept. Yeah. And giving. Yeah. Right? Instead of looking, you're giving. Yeah. And when we give, we actually come a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. I don't know where I picked this up from, but somebody gave it to me a while back. It must have been, it must have been really, really young. Okay. Cat, Cat says to me, "Never come to the world like this." Mm. Mm -hmm. But I did their hand. Come, he said, "Come like this. Hmm. Put something in. Don't come yeah. like this, wanting something. Yeah. Come like that. You go, yeah. you go to the world like that." Yeah, it's a different game. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You'll you'll be happier. You'll make a greater contribution. More of what you're giving away will come to you than you will ever possibly be able to give away. Yeah. I, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I, this is what this one little affirmation I would say to myself from time to time, which I totally you know self talk is everything. Talk is everything. Language is everything. You ain't nothing yeah. else about language really. If you ask me. Uh, oh. So so I tell myself I I I earn and receive. Uh, opportunity, wealth, and prosperity more than I can save, invest, or give away. Mm. It, now, how much money is that? When how much resource is that? When it's more than you can spend, save, save or give away, or give away, right? That's good. And, and so it just and and it comes and it, it comes and it comes to me in every instant of my life, but not always the same way, right? You know, this part of my life is it's in a it's in a, it's in a teacup. Mm -hmm. When I met you, it was in a you know big old you know vat. Right, you know, right, right, right. Another right. you know, part of my life is 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 in a skyscraper. You know, it comes it comes yeah. in different forms, but I always have more than I need to spend, more than I need for my own personal savings, more than I can you know invest properly without losing it, <laughs> yeah. and give away. It's like. Abundance is always there, and 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 abundance not like greed, but like enough. I, I get it. I get like, it. Like like enough. So so that's that's a big piece of it. So Doc, we're down to like the last six six and a half minutes. Okay, good, 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 good. We need to be with somebody we're loving. Yep. Have something we to make, care about. Have a hobby. Have we care about what we can give to. Right. What we're creating. Right. And then, right. I'm so out. I, then I got music. I got mm -hmm. music. So I create music yes. every day. You know, what I do is a creative thing. So I practice for dexterity. I practice for, mm -hmm. you know, understanding, keeping the basic rudiments there. And I practice for, yes. you know, to, to learn the music. But I never pick up the thing that I don't just somehow play something new to me. Mm -hmm. That comes That's out enough. of me. Oh, mm -hmm. so. I'm just gonna just play along and jam along and let whatever come come. I'm gonna stay with it, groove with it, yep. blah blah blah. You know, make yep. them play, stay, yeah. play, stay with it. You know, and and then let it rip because in in, in those three, four, five, ten minutes, or however long it takes to get through that whole thing, yes, uh, I have slipped away into no mind, mm. nowhere, no space, no place, just existing, being, mm. thriving in the cosmos. You know, like I'm. Yeah. Dark matter now holding this shit together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It feels yeah. like that. So, do something creative, something that really yeah. releases you. And it could be as simple as praying or meditating, or something right. active like yoga mm -hmm. or playing music or whatever. Yeah. But have that dimension in your life. Yes, sir. And, and then, uh, and then, and the physical thing. Now you wouldn't know it, given the. <laughs> You wouldn't know it given my body type, but everybody got a certain type. You know, some of us, you know, all yeah. like you, bro. And other ones <laughs> with me. I got so my, my family got different types. All right. I would call them they are, so that they're, they're the ones that are tight, you know, five, six, eight, ten, a few more than twelve percent body fat. They thinking we I got to go on a crash diet, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's that there's cats like that. And then there's and so mostly men are like that, and then some of the women I would okay. say about uh, the majority of men and the minority of women are like that. Okay. And, and then the other style is uh, a, a huge exomorph like myself with, you know, if you if if all you got is thirty percent body fat, then something must be wrong with you. You got to go to the doctor. <laughs> Get it together. Yeah, you you vanishing over there. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I understand those those bodies, but you know, I make I make it do what it do, right? Yes, yes, sir. My thing is, my thing is, is, is martial arts, um, mm. and I, I like the forms of martial arts. Like yeah. the, you know, you know, I'll do Tai Chi all day long if I could, if I could actually do it all day long. You know, it's like that, or yeah. katas, you know. You know, basic stuff, and then I've been doing a lot of mitt work because I got my son here working with me, so we go, you know, that's cool. Mid, I, I, you know, get the get the anxiety out. So do something physical. Yes. And then you know, I mean, this I took this up from from a, a lesson I got from you just uh, uh, over at Ogden Park when you was you did a, did a little thing over there about yes, water, sir. sipping that water. Sip, yes. You know, if you don't want to go to the bathroom every sixteen minutes, then sip that water, right? Yeah, you can it's drink it. Sip. Sip. Right, so sip water all day, and because um, that's who we are. We're 70, 80 percent water, so it gives you some like that. And I've been eating live food. Um, yes, two thirds of my diet or more is live food. I mean, it's like don't eat and 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 don't. I don't want to see no heat. You know, I might warm you up to ninety ninety five, but you ain't going yeah. to go one hundred and five. You know. Yeah, Good. that's great though. I mean, two thirds means you still get to do whatever it is you feel like you would be starving without, and yet the majority of what you give your body is is keeping it vibrant. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. That's phenomenal. And the only other thing I get in there really is a uh, you know is a is a the contraband that comes through my life nowadays is is uh, bread, a wheat product. Uh, I don't, I don't yeah. I, every now and then, you know, you just, just a sandwich is definitely a part of my game. Uh, yeah. Every, Got to have at least one or two every month. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then, and then I, I, I like my, I like my protein that used to, that breathes or, or, or uh, has gills. Got it. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I, sure. I'll, I'll take in some living protein like that. Uh, but I would say, you know, because strictly for flavor, look, and tradition. You know. Understood. I you totally know, got. It. Every now and then, so even when I think I'm getting bad, I go, so uh, uh, like we, something special, go, let's go have a steak. What was the last time you had a steak? Oh, about, I don't know, 15 months ago. Okay, good. It's time for a steak. Okay, I'm going to go for a steak. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> quick question for you, because we got like two minutes. I'm Two quick questions I'm starting to ask all the guests. Right. I think you told us one, but I want you to be explicit about it. What do you do for fun? Oh, man. I, sh I share and give to others for fun. I, share it because I do stuff. You know, I volunteer. I I, yeah. uh, I I find a way to be useful to others, and and uh, and I and I share ideas. You know, so it's, I got so many things in my mind. Right. Yeah, right. that's one. Second question: What's yeah. one resource? If you decided, you know what, I'm done. Tomorrow you're going to a monastery. You're you're no longer going to speak the rest of your life. What would be one resource you believe with us that that we should know? Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Life is the conversation. Your life will show up directly correlative to the conversation that you are about yourself and the world. If you want a beautiful world, start having beautiful conversations with yourself, about yourself, and with others about that world, and it'll start to show up with you. Piss mm -hmm. and moan and talk shit, and you will get pissed and shit in your world. That you will <laughs> moan about. Yeah! <laughs> Yes, sir. Which will, which will generate even more. <laughs> yes. So be careful of your mentation, of your yes. inner subjectivity, the things that you say to yourself. Yes. Be careful what comes out of your mouth because it's all creative. In the that's beginning right. with the word, God created the world saying, so yes. let there be. Oh, that's real, baby. Yep. So All day, every day. And, uh, and, and be kind. If you can't be anything else, just be kind. And kind will lead you to compassion. Compassion will lead you to love. Love will lead you to joy. And what else do you need? Nothing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Hold on one sec, Doc. Yeah. Hey, guys, I just want to thank you all for joining me today on this Thriving Thursday. Full of casual conversation with wisdom and nuggets. Pay attention because it's the most effective way to learn. General conversation, unstaged, unhinged. This is Marquise Martin Hayes. Hope you have a fabulous day. Keep thriving.